Hello, I am Alessandro and I have been working on Rust and eBPF for a few years now. I'm going to show you what writing uh, eBPF programs in Rust looks like today. I started working on eBPF in 2019. I wrote large parts of the RedBPF library, and then I also wrote Cargo BPF, which is a program that at the time was needed in order to build uh, Rust code to eBPF bytecode. I then moved on from those projects and I started working on adding eBPF target support to the Rust compiler itself. Uh, that work was finally merged a couple of months ago. So all you need today in order to compile Rust to uh, eBPF bytecode is just the regular standard Rust compiler. Then also at the beginning of the year, I started working on a new library that I also released a couple of months ago called uh, Aya. The reason why I started working on Aya is that I wanted to build a library that was built with a strong focus on operability, ease of deployment, and developer experience. Uh, Aya is built entirely in Rust. It does not need a C++ chain or kernel headers to build. It does not link to any external libraries. It's completely self-contained and very easy to deploy. And uh, even though it's a relatively young project, it already provides an idiomatic and safe API for most of the features exposed by the eBPF uh, platform, including PTF. Um, the easiest way to get started with Aya is uh, through the cargo generate program. So if you run this command on your terminal, it will generate some basic boilerplate and it will prompt you for a project name and it will also generate some simple example code. The example code looks roughly like this. Uh, as you can see, the code is split in three sections. At the top, we load the eBPF bytecode. Uh, loading entails uh, running relocations and creating maps and doing everything that is needed in order to run uh, programs later on. And then in the central part, we get a reference to a map and we insert a value in it. And then at the bottom of the program, we uh, get a reference to the XDP program we want to run, we load it and we attach it to a network interface. Uh, to build the code, all you need is to run cargo build. This is the standard Rust build uh, command. And because we want to generate a statically linked uh, binary, we uh, use muscle as the target. As you can see, this builds very fast. Uh, and yeah, if you verify uh, with LDD, it actually depends on nothing. So that was the user space part of the code. But what about writing the kernel side eBPF code in Rust too? First of all, a lot of people ask me why bother doing that at all. If the verifier already enforces memory safety, then what is the advantage of using uh, Rust over using C? And the answer is obviously that there's a lot more to Rust than the bottle checker, right? Rust comes with a very powerful type system. Uh, for example, in Aya, we're able to provide a strongly typed API for maps, for helpers, for programs, for pretty much everything. Whereas if you work with maps, say for example, in, uh, in um, C, you know that you end up working with a lot of void pointers. Uh, Rust also comes with some very useful types, including slices, byte slices, or the result and option types that are especially handy when implementing uh, error handling. And if you've written MVPF code, you know that you end up uh, implementing a lot of very strict error handling in order to pass the verifier checks. And then finally, one thing I'm super excited about is all the tooling that is uh, in the Rust ecosystem. We've already seen uh, Cargo and Cargo Generate, uh, but the thing I'm mostly excited about is that the eBPF code you write with Rust can actually be uploaded on the Rust package index. And so over time, I think that we will be building an ecosystem of reusable eBPF code. This is what the uh, actual eBPF code looks like. Uh, so you can see that at the top, we generate, we, we, we uh, define a global map. We annotate it with the uh, map macro attribute. And then we define an XDP program annotated with an XDP macro attribute. And then the logic of the program is very simple. Uh, for every incoming packet, we get the TCP destination port. Uh, if the port is blocked, we block the packet. Otherwise, we let it pass. And to build, uh, again, you can just use cargo. You use uh, cargo x task build eBPF to build the eBPF code. And then you use just regular cargo build to build the user space code. And that is pretty much it. If you're interested in what you saw uh, or in, in Aya, uh, Aya is developed on GitHub. Uh, the documentation is on, on Docs RS. We have a Discord channel where we discuss development. And finally, if you want to reach out to me, you can find me on Twitter. Thank you for watching.